Welcome everyone to Best of Interest. This is Shane back again for our Stock Pick of the Day video. It is September 5th, Thursday. This will be the last Stock Pick of the Day video for the week. We're going to take a look at one out of the information technology sector. This is Clear Secure. It is recommended by Brad Rowland. Excellent review as always, but you are right. They are pricey. He was speaking about LAM Research, the video we did yesterday. If you would, could you add you to your list? Thanks. And that's what we're going to look at. Ticker YOU. This is out of the information technology sector. Now, before we get too far in the video, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button down below if you find any value in the content. If you are a dividend growth investor, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Click that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. I do stock pick of the day videos like this Monday through Thursday whenever the market's open. I also do viewer suggestions like this one here, uh, Clear Secure, we're going to do for Brad. So again, make sure you are subscribed. A lot of you out there watching the videos are not subscribed. And drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the videos. Let me know what you think of Clear Secure. And let's get back to it. Now, this is the vested interest stock screener. This is how we're going to go through the video. It's going to how we're look at Clear Secure and how we look at any company that we review on this channel. It's also how I look at a company on a high level to see if I'm interested in adding it to my watch list and doing a deeper dive into the financials. Thousands of stocks out there is a quick screener to get through some of those to see which ones I am more interested in. Uh, must meet five of eight. We'll see where this one stacks up at the end of the video. Or if it's a financial company like a bank or an insurance company, I add in price to book and then it must meet six of nine. You can use price to book for any company. Just don't use one as fair value for other companies outside the financial sector. Uh, companies like this in the information technology sector, industrial sector, any other sectors, you want to compare the company you're looking at to a company, company in a similar uh, space, in a similar sector that does a similar thing, right? Now back to Clear Secure. Check them out at www.clearme.com. That's www.clearme.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this information from. With Clear, you are always you. Clear's mission is to enable frictionless and safe journeys using your identity. With millions of members and 100 plus partners across North America, Clear's identity platform connects you to the cards in your wallet and more. Transforming the way you live, work, and travel, we use your face, eyes, and fingerprints to verify you are you, giving you safe and easy access to what you do. So that's really what they are. They are an identity uh, verification company. They work for you as an individual. They work for companies as well. Uh, this was one of the blurbs. If you were to go to their homepage, you could see what they all they offer, right? Some of the stuff they offer is like being able to uh, get on a flight sooner so you can check in with TSA, utilizing an app that they have on your phone. Uh, this was one of the things they offer for businesses. Clear Verified offers partners a connected identity platform that enables sem seamless and secure experiences for your customers and your business through a single verified identity our solution integrates within your existing experiences powering identity verification at any touch point with a range of verification options from database checks to document and fraud risk screening clear helps you meet your business and compliance needs so again they'll set up your uh, verification process for your business and you can use them as an individual to again make sure that you are secure that you are who you are someone isn't stealing your identity uh, different ways that they can verify who you are and that you are indeed the person that you say you are that's really their bread and butter they are an identity verification company now we are, are talking about clear secure Inc they were down at 2.4 percent on the day that is why we're taking a look at them Ticker YOU out of the information technology sector closed up the day at $29.09. Looks like they're down a little bit further in the after hours here. 52 week range as low as $15.28, as high as $30.58. They are closer to their 52 week high than their 52 week low. Information technology and a lot of uh, sectors right now are really pulling back. So it might be a time to start looking at information technology if you're looking for something in that sector. Market cap of 4.051 billion, so they are a small cap company, a beta of 1.61, so they are more volatile than the overall market. You might be able to use that volatility to your advantage, though. Again, whenever companies are real volatile, right, you might be able to use that volatility and buy on the downturns and then hold through the upswings. Price to earnings, $37.30 per share. That is very elevated. This company needs to be growing extremely fast. Because uh, even with tech companies, you know, mid to high 20s is not a bad PE, but you start getting into the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, that screams overvaluation to me. 
EPS earnings per share sitting at 78 cents per share. Earnings date, August 6th. So we just saw that last month. Uh, so they probably won't have another one for a few months. Forward dividend yield of 1.34% uh, or 40% paid out on the year. Uh, now, I did look at their dividend history. We'll look at that here in a little bit, but it is a little wonky how they pay out. Uh, it's kind of sporadic. We'll see that here in a little bit. X dividend date, September 10th. So if you were to buy them now, you would be in line for the next dividend. Looks like they're going to pay out on the 17th. X dividend date, uh, well, we just went through that. One year target estimate, $27.86. So Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information from, they see this one potentially a little overvalued where it currently sits as far as price per share. Let's jump over here and see if we can look at dividend yield theory to see if this one is potentially undervalued. Typically to do that, we look at their five-year dividend yield average. They don't have enough time to meet that. Uh, so we're not going to be able to do that here. And we would compare that to their forward dividend yield of 1.34%. But again, we don't have enough time for him to look at. You could look at their trailing annual dividend yield of 1.17%. And, you know, this one says that according to just a one-year basis, it would be potentially undervalued. But I need five years of data, really, for this one to work. Payout ratio is low, 44.87%. I like under 75%. So this one does have room to increase their dividend. They're not in danger of cutting that dividend. Now, let's jump down to free cash flow. I like growing free cash flow with companies because typically if a company has growing free cash flow, they have a growing dividend that goes along with it. They can pay down debt, make acquisitions, repurchase shares, uh, make sure the company is in financial, good financial standing. And one way to do that is to have growing free cash flow. Going back to 2021 here, you can see 40 million in free cash flow, 2020, 2022 up to 136 2023 up to 198 trailing 12 months so far 268 million so nice steady free cash flow growth i do like that that is a nice steady free cash flow growth really good free cash flow growth over the last few years especially right almost doubled up over the last trailing 12 months now we'll have to wait to see how 2024 shakes out and how much of 2023 numbers or 2024 numbers are accounted for with 2023 are reported but again we're in september so most of this trailing 12 months should include this year's numbers they are repurchasing shares here you can see 11 million repurchased in 2021 2022 down to five not bad 2023 69 and trailing 12 months they're continuing that trend 174 million in repurchase of shares but again we'll have to wait to see how much of that is 2023 numbers so i like that they're repurchasing shares i like the growing free cash flow very good overall so far now we're going to jump over to stockanalysis.com. This is another source that I go to for information. You pick any sources that you like. These are just two that I go to. I am not affiliated and I always recommend more than one source so you can make sure the information you are getting is accurate and up to date. Sometimes these are outdated numbers. Sometimes uh, they're just inaccurate. You know, sometimes they're just wrong. It happens. Now, they have five analysts that have taken a look at this. They call it a consensus buy. They have a low estimate of $20, which would be a 32.91% decrease from where it currently sits. Average estimate of $29.20 would be a 2.05% decrease from where it currently sits. And if it happened to hit their high of $40, that's the only way you'd see some upside as far as price appreciation, but that would be a 34.18% increase. You could collect that you know, small dividend yield uh, that they do pay out. Now we're going to jump into statistics, see how well this company is at reinvesting its capital back into itself. I like 10% or better for return on equity and return on invested capital. Return on equity sitting at 35.01%, smoking high, very good number overall. Return on invested capital, just over the 10% I'm looking for at 11.41. Good numbers overall here. Now EPS growth, they did not have anything listed. I don't like that and they didn't have anything listed for revenue growth. I don't really use revenue growth as one of the metrics but i do like to see growing revenue eps i like five percent or better forecasted over the next five years but again they didn't have that listed so i don't know what they're projecting now we are going to jump over to dividend history here you can see they are a quarterly payer they say their payout ratio is 51.51 i think yahoo finance had it at 47 either way we'll call it around 50 percent payout ratio under the 75 percent that i'm looking for Dividend growth, they say 127.76%. Now, I do want to talk about that a little bit because I don't know. They're very sporadic here, but let's finish out. Growth of one year, they're saying. I don't know that that's accurate, but I'm, I'm going to give them growing dividend yield uh, because they list it as such, but I, I'm kind of questioning whether they are growing or not. Buyback yield is negative 6.38%. They need to get better at buying back their shares. We want to see this in the positive. Shareholder yield of negative 4.99%. We also want to see that in the positive. So they've got a little bit of work to do in these uh, realms, but I do like the growing free cash flow. Looks like overall the business uh, fundamentals of the business are growing, and that's what you want to see. 
But let's look at the free cat or let's look at the dividend history here for a second. Uh, and they, their, their payouts are sporadic as well. You know, December, May, August, November, then March, April, June, September. So I don't see that they pay out on a consistent basis and their payout dividends are not consistent. Going back to 2020, 2022 here in November, they were paying 25 cents. Then they dropped it May 17th, uh, 2023 down to 19 cents and some fractions of a penny. Dropped again August 2023 up uh, down to six cents and some fractions of a penny. Now back up in November uh, to 55 cents, but then down again in February 2024, eight cents and some fractions of a penny. Back up in March 2024, 32 cents. And then the last two payments have been consistent, June 2024, 10 cents, and then September 2024, 10 cents. So really, overall, they've decreased their dividend payout in 2024. So maybe I shouldn't give them growing free cash flow on this one. I don't know what's going on here with their why their dividends are real sporadic like this. It's, it's kind of odd. Uh, they don't have a lot of history, only been paying you know since 2022. So again, not five years. I'd like to see a little better history and a little steady uh, steady your payments here. Well, let's look at the screener, understand the business. That's where we started. Again, this is an identity company, right? They're, they're an information technology company that helps businesses and individuals with different ways to verify their identity and to use that to simplify things, like I said, like TSA checkpoints, uh, maybe paying your bills, making sure you are the right person whenever you are paying bills, that sort of thing is what they do. You'd want to look at this one a little more because it is a little difficult to understand exactly what they do, but overall, they're an identi identity verification company. That's really their bread and butter. Uh, growing free cash flow over the last four years. Yes, they do. Growing dividend. I'm going to say actually no, they don't have a growing dividend. Uh, I know they list it, but it doesn't look like it. It actually looks like they dropped it here in 2024 from 32 cents down to 10 cents, at least in the last two payments. Dividend rate ratio is under 75%, so a check there. Dividend yield theory, we don't have five years of data, can't use it. Buy below current cost basis. It is not within 15% of a 52-week low. It is not in my portfolio, so it can't be below my cost basis. Return on invested capital and return on equity, it is good there, both over 10%. Earnings per share growth was not listed, so no check there. So we end up with one, two, three, four. This one would not quite make it onto my watch list. Now, if it was to continue to pull back and make it within 15% of a 52-week low, you could add a check there when it does. And if they happen to list earnings anytime in the near future and it's over 5%, you get a check there. But so far, right now anyway, this one would not make it onto my watch list. That does not mean it shouldn't make it onto your, your watch list. Maybe your watch list is different. Uh, maybe your criteria for making it on it is different. That's just mine. Well, that is really it for this one. Let me know what you think of Clear Secure. This is, again, out of the information technology sector. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the best interest community. We are dividend growth investors here. Hopefully you are as well. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I am always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. Again, clear, secure. Let me know what you think of this one in the comment section down below. And if you have a company you'd like me to cover in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it down below. I'll work it into the rotation. And this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend coming up. Don't forget to tune back in for our portfolio update Sunday. One more reason to make sure to you are uh, subscribed to the channel and click that notification bell. And we'll see you in that video. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investing your educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk of candidates' money. You should never invest in any amount. You're not conclusive. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select the criteria or seek the advice and counsel of a certified financial advisor.